Hey guys, my name is BrainBean. Thanks for joining me once again. Today we're going to be taking a look at DOS Keyboard's entire lineup of gaming peripherals. Now if you're wondering to yourself, I didn't know that DOS Keyboard had a lineup of gaming peripherals. Well the reason for this is their gaming peripherals used to be flown under the brand name Division Zero, which you can still get to through their website. But now all of their products are still going to have the same model numbers, but instead of saying Division Zero, they'll simply just say DOS Keyboard. Now to help differentiate between DOS Keyboard's regular products and their gaming products, they're still going to be keeping the Division Zero logo. Now you'll be able to see this logo on the mouse illuminated in the grip, and you can think of this as the same way that Logitech has their G logo on all of their gaming peripherals. It'll basically be the exact same thing with DOS Keyboard and the old Division Zero logo. So we're going to start things off by taking a look at the keyboard first. Now this is the DOS Keyboard X40 Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. When you take this keyboard out of the box, the first thing you're you're going to notice is that it has a really durable rugged design and part of that is because it has a heavy duty metal top plate that's bolted onto the top of the keyboard now this is pretty cool because you can order different style metal top covers from DOS keyboards website these metal top covers are going to run you about 30 bucks for their standard color schemes that they have as well as 40 bucks for their limited edition models that they have it's a little bit expensive for a cosmetic upgrade, but when you think about how much money we throw into our PC setups, if you're really that concerned about the color of your keyboard's top plate, it's probably something that you can afford. And to change out the top covers, you simply just unscrew them with the tool they provide to you when you order the new top cover and slap on the new one that you ordered. This is pretty cool because it'll help fill in with different themes that you have in your setup if you have a different color scheme and you want to have something that ties in a little bit better with your setup there's plenty of options on their website now the keyboard is a 104 key mechanical keyboard with five additional programmable macro keys the keyboard features full n key rollover as well as a usb and audio jack pass through which is something that i really like to see in keyboards and this particular keyboard has really great placement where they put the actual usb and audio jacks a lot of times you'll find it coming out the side of the keyboard which can kind of get in the way of your mouse and it's really annoying but with this keyboard they have it in the far back right corner of the keyboard facing back towards the end of your desk so i think that's a really nice placement and something that i personally really like to see in the keyboard the switches in the X40 are DOS Keyboard's own Alpha Zulu gaming switches. Now normally when a company switches from say the industry standard Cherry MX switches and goes for manufacturing their own switches, you can kind of be wary of that maybe they're cutting corners a little bit or trying to go with a little bit cheaper manufacturer so that they can get a bigger profit. But in the case of DOS Keyboard's Alpha Zulu switch, I really think that they were just going for something a little bit more custom towards gamers because it uses really high-end components in the switches. We're talking gold contact points in all of the switches, as well as a lot of other high-end components. And you can find out more information about the Alpha Zulu switch on DOS Keyboard's website, as well as how it compares to other switches. I'll probably also make a comparison video later on if you're interested in checking that out. But just to kind of go over the specs a little bit, the Alpha Zulu switch comes in one of two varieties. You can get it in a linear, which is the olive green switch, or you can get it in a tactile non-clicky version similar to Cherry MX Brown. That is the mustard color switch. Now the switches differ from Cherry MX mainly in just that they have a shorter actuation distance at 1.7 millimeters. The travel time is still the same, the amount of actuation force is still the same, but they do have a slightly longer lifespan at 60 million keystrokes. Here's a quick sound test for you of the Alpha Zulu tactile switch. After using this keyboard for about a week as my daily driver, I have to say that the Alpha Zulu Switch performs much better than I would have expected. Especially being that it's a manufacturer's own Switch, I was a little bit hesitant thinking, okay, it's probably not going to be as great as the Cherry MX Brown. And seeing that I usually use as my daily driver the Razer Orange Switch, this is about as close as you could compare to a home brand Switch with Razer Orange versus the Alpha Zulu Mustard Color, which is their brown non-linear tactile version and I have to say I really really like the switch I like it a lot more than I like Razer's orange switch and it does have subtle differences between the cherry MX brown I found it to be a little bit snappier as far as the way the tactile bump felt it wasn't as subtle as cherry MX's but it wasn't nearly as hard as something like a cherry MX clear it's a little bit clickier a little bit snappier and I really really like typing on it the keyboard also gives you the standard media keys by way of the function key as well as a gaming mode that you can activate as well so that you don't have to worry about hitting your OS key and screwing up your gaming experience. 
Now my only big gripe with this keyboard is that the LED backlighting only comes in red. Now the nice thing is that the metal backplate under the switches is also red, so it helps accentuate that red backlighting. Personally, I would have really liked it if it was an RGB backlit keyboard, and I would probably even make it my daily driver if that were the case. Hopefully we can see that coming in the future, but if you're a fan of red backlighting, or you just like having a red keyboard so it disguises the blood of your enemies, you murderer, then it's really not that big of an issue. And speaking of the backlighting, one thing that I always love to see on keyboards is when mechanical keyboards can have all of the secondary functions on the keycaps illuminated, so I highly applaud them for being able to position all of those secondary functions in a way that the mechanical stem doesn't get in the way of the double shot on the keycap. Given the fact that it doesn't have RGB backlighting, I think the price of $129.99 is a very fair price for this keyboard. You're getting five macro keys, you're getting the audio and USB pass-through, a lot of great features and the switches are really top quality and I'd have to say that this compares most in my eyes to something like the Razer Black Widow. And if you want something that's probably built a little bit better than the Black Widow but still gives you all of the features that it has, this is definitely the keyboard for you. Alright, now let's move on to the mouse. The DOS Keyboard M50 is an ambidextrous gaming mouse which is something you don't always see on the market every day. It has 9 programmable buttons and two of those are thumb buttons on the right side of the mouse, and two of those are thumb buttons on the left side of the mouse. Now this isn't a bad thing, because even if you only use the thumb buttons on one side, you have the option to still program the buttons on the other side, and even though the positioning might be a little bit awkward, you still have the option to use those if you want to. In using the mouse, I found that it has a really durable, heavy construction. It has a nice non-slip surface on the top of the mouse, and it uses metal Teflon feet underneath the mouse so that it slides around really well and you don't have to worry about it wearing down too much. It does have a pretty comfortable ergonomic shape. Now personally, I found it to be a little bit thin, but I have pretty big hands and so for that reason I prefer a little bit wider mouse, but for a lot of you, you probably won't find this to be an issue. It also has really nice vented rubberized sides so that you have a non-slip dry grip there so you don't have to worry about your fingers sliding around the mouse when you're having intense gaming sessions. The mouse communicates to the computer via an ultra-fast 1000 Hz polling rate, so you have rapid fire as far as when your keystroke registers into the computer. The mouse button switches are rated to go up to 300 clicks per minute, so you don't have to worry about getting all those APMs when you're playing StarCraft. The mouse also features a 4G laser sensor with on-the-fly DPI adjustment, and you can set that in between 800, 1600, 3200, and 6400 DPI with respective LED indicators on the mouse. The mouse also has a nice long 7 foot braided USB cable with gold plated USB connectors. And as you can see there's also the illuminated Division Zero logo in the palm rest of the mouse. And again just like the keyboard comes with red backlighting. Now just like the keyboard I use this mouse as my daily driver for about a week for both gaming and for working on videos and projects. The one gripe I do have with it like I said is that the mouse body itself is a little bit thin but I think that goes into the ambidextrous design. And also, I felt like the thumb buttons, mouse 4 and 5, on either side of the mouse were a little bit small for my taste. So I'm sure if you take a little bit more time to get used to them, it wouldn't really bother you that much because most mouse buttons on the side like that are about that size. But I'm used to a little bit bigger mouse button on the side with something like the Death Adder Chroma. So that was something that took a lot of getting used to for me. Now when I tested the mouse, I used it on the DOS Keyboard Flex. This is their gaming mouse pad. It's a soft mouse pad and it measures 13.4 inches by 11 inches, so it gives you a nice big space. It has a really good rubberized bottom so that it's nice and grippy on the desk. And I really like that they have a stitched outer lining on the mouse pad so that you don't have to worry about it fraying or bending up as you use it. Overall, I had a great experience with the mouse pad. It's nice and thin and I think coupled with the Teflon feet on the M50 mouse, I think it was a perfectly paired experience with both the mouse and the mouse pad. And the last product in the DOS keyboard gaming lineup is the Mouse Bungee. Now this was my first personal experience using a Mouse Bungee, but I have to say it was a really pleasant one. And I don't really know why with the amount of games that I play and the absurd amount of money I spend on games and computers and peripherals, I didn't have one of these already. But I have to say, now that I've used one, I can't really see myself living without it. It kind of gives you the experience like you're using a wireless mouse, but you're still getting all of the advantages of having a wired connection to the computer. A couple things I really liked about the Bungie is that it's very heavy and it has nice non-slip feet on the bottom, as well as having a low profile design. It actually fits underneath my monitor quite nicely, and I didn't feel like I had any issues getting it to fit anywhere on my desk. 
Overall, I gotta say I'm really impressed with DOS Keyboard's gaming lineup. Now, being involved with mechanical keyboards and doing a lot of research for reviews and things like that, I already knew that DOS Keyboard makes a great quality keyboard. But seeing them jump into the gaming market and making great quality products with the features that a lot of us find really important is something that I really like to see and I'm excited to see where they take this line in the future. I think all the products in the line are very reasonably priced, except for maybe the metal top cover which is a little bit pricey, but like I said, it's not something that's essential to your setup. Well that's it for the video guys, give it a like if you enjoyed it to show your support and be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new here because I've got a lot more review videos like this one coming up for you in the future. You can also follow me on Twitter at BrainBeanGaming and if you'd like to support the channel even more you can find my Amazon affiliate link located down in the description below. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.